So just scrying the aether of bag on this, the third day, the third evening of the Josiah ritual. So I'm seeing a cylinder roll up in front of me and it sort of is taking on the form of a spiral. So it's looping around into wider and wider circles. And I'm sort of seeing both a more tapered kind of funnel superimposed over a regular conical um, spiral or, or, you know, spiral-like thing that this is making. So from above, I'm looking down, and one is having more of that ratio increase, so sort of like a golden spiral. Um, I'm being told that in the third dimension, it, it really is more uh, the, the spiral, the funnel is more asymptotic, um, for the one that is uh, ratio derived, um, multiplied basically, whereas the other one is more conical. So there are two superimposed and they're trying to show me that there's this just a simple interaction in this dimension. And they're again showing me the jagged point of view from this other uh, fourth dimension. And then and again, this is sort of, for whatever reason, it's, it's hard to describe, but it's, it's like cones are being superimposed. So maybe from like some kind of additional perspective, but it's able to like come about Earth. It's interesting. It's hard to describe. It's sort of like you, if you were to separate out the elements of the torus, on the one hand, you have, T-O-R-U-S, you have a, you have this part that comes in and is tapered towards the very middle and then come back, comes back out again. That part, I can definitely see like jagged lines, especially in the middle, those right angles coming together. It's like, a, you know, if you were to have some kind of shredder in the middle or something like that. But within this, there's also just a very regular conical section that is kind of coming about in an extraordinarily regular, if, it's like if you see uh, if you were just literally tr going in a circle and ensuring that each time you didn't step in the previous one, but you're not trying to get farther and farther away progressively. Um, instead, you're taking that step out. That's the other one. And so, I mean, I guess we're up to about uh, four dimensions or five dimensions, at least for this to come about and being able to encompass Earth somehow. And I'm sort of seeing two different conical sections coming about. So if you were to think of like two X's on top of each other, like the Roman numeral 20, and I'm sort of being reminded of um, John Dee's work with the Monus Hieroglyphica. I still have yet to finish that video series as a side note. Anyway, <laughs> um, so looking at this is is interesting and I'm I'm just patiently trying to understand and tr really trying to relate this to the heart. So once again, as I'm doing this, there's not as much of this dispersive energy, but the angels are having me focus on this symbol of a white square, which uh, in its higher dimensional forms, you know, you could have like a cube and a tesseract, but the, du the dual to that, the dual polytope would be one of the... Uh, an octahedron or a hyper octahedron. And so this is lighting everything up. And this is sort of like, if you think about going to the four corners or doing like some kind of, uh, I feel like there's, I'm not remembering this entirely well, but like the, the whole, the, this idea of the four corners of the world, well, imagine the four corners of the heart, right? So on the one hand, this is a, you know, the square, if you take a, if you rotate a tetrahedron appropriately, you get a square from this, from a 2D perspective, but really it's, it's encompassing three dimensions, right? 
So I'm imagining this as like the heart. It's like you're the four corners of the heart before you kind of go into the very center. It's sort of like this meditative practice. And what I'm seeing is, is that in so doing, you know, if you were to go through the various emotions that you have that sort of are really what keep you engaged with the world. Um, and of course, and then I understand that psychologists have identified more than this, but I'm just saying those, those that bring meaning, those that connect you to others. I'm seeing this, like doing this work, really keeping the heart soft and, and, and accepting kind of like this emptiness rather than the armor that we usually put about it, but this um, simplicity and a heart can sort of take on all kinds of armor, but at the core, it really is a simple thing in and of itself. So I'm seeing, uh, this is sort of like, you know, my personal version of it, but I'm also seeing like the earth having its own version of this. And of course, all hearts are aligned with the divine. And I'm seeing this light up in this really interesting mathematical, you know, at least five dimensions, maybe six. I mean, I don't know. I can't, I can only describe what I'm seeing. It's like the angels are trying to like give me cross sections at appropriate points. But I have seen this symbol of a Taurus before. And seeing it now in this way, in this fashion, it's like, okay, you know, we're still relatively close to Earth with the Aether of Bag here, but it's like there's this, this grinding, this roiling, this really working through problems. And really trying to to get at the heart of it, almost literally, right? And in order to do that, I think, you know, each of us as individuals really needs to work on softening that heart, doing the work, stuff like that. And I'm asking the angels if there's anything that I'm missing in this interpretation. And they're saying that, you know, at times it's going to feel painful, but it's, it's almost like, you know, this is where the, the, the jagged rules of 3D reality are coming up against this real divine circular process that is sort of coming in from, um, from the poles of heaven. So I'm asking if there's anything else. And they're saying no. What's interesting is that a lot of this pure geometry I'm, I'm recognizing from the Book of Libra Logat, but a lot of this sort of jagged stuff, it's like the, the moon is trying to bring in the last bits of interpretation, or how do I put this? It's like the it's like it's including the 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 truck and the loading docks and the delivery system of these grand sort of heavenly perfect spheres. So there's like this merging of these two. It's still geometrical at its core, but this sort of jaggedness is not like what we're considering this pure platonic solids and forms and stuff like that that we see with spheres, dodecahedra, stuff like that, cubes. Um, but nonetheless, it's it's important as your heart is working through this, is what I'm being told, to recognize um, the sharp edges and the corners and allow a little bit of your humanity to also come forward as we are also reaching up towards the angelic and towards the divine in our journeys to, because that's also part of our humanity. So there's sort of like the closer to brass tacks version, but also the, the higher part. But there is sort of like this feeling of grinding, 
of working through, of the hard work and things not always going well, setbacks, stuff like that, it's all part of the necessary geometry in order to have this three-dimensional existence. And for what it's worth, I mean, we're all divine, so God is also suffering as part of this process, which is what I learned from the Jebbafall ritual. So I'm asking if there's anything else, and they're just giving me, they're reminding me of the, of the noontime scrying that I did where I was given like this heart over top of my heart, and now there's like this light, and it's sort of like this eternal flame of the divine it's it's just a reminder that we have that okay and that we can always we have we are this is our birthright and so we always have this available to us to warm us and light us even when things are very dark we just need to stoke it and that's a hard thing to do but there are means and methods and that's it